Okay, so chapter 10 out of the PHP book talks about, the, well, I'll say the first half of it is stuff you already know. Editing, deleting, filling out a form, getting it to do those basic um, UD functions of CRUD, the U and the D. Um, but the other thing that's going to go over is pagination and sorting data on a page. So pagination is where you've got the previous and next down at the bottom of a list of things. Um, and this requires a pretty tight synergy between your PHP and your SQL. I'm going to go over that. And then so does being able to sort a table. So for example, if you want to have um, uh, up at the top of your table first name be clickable, click on it and suddenly the page refreshes and it's in order, alphabetical order by first name. We can do that as well. So I've got, um, I added a whole bunch of new users to my users database or table, and what have I got? Like eight of seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and display five of them at a time, and allow the user to go previous and next through these. So here's my H, or my PHP that makes this happen. There's just a simple connect over to the to the database file that takes care of all of my connection. And here's my current query, which is just grab everything from users. Down here in my HTML, there's a little do while script that will simply spit out the email, the first name, and the last name uh, in a div. And just does all of that. Well, what I want to be able to do is add in a new constraint called limit. Do you guys remember that from SQL class? Okay, so limit can have two functions to it, or two numbers, which are how many and where should it start. And I thought I had my book out. I had that loop. And I'm sorry, it's uh, it's always got to be, you start at zero and you go for five. Am I doing that right, Karen? Typically, if you're just starting off, you just put this, and it only gives you the first five results. Um, so I have no idea if this is going to work. Let's see. I'm gonna Firefox up and running. Okay, so that's giving me the first five. I can shift this over and say I want to start at the next five. So wait, oh shoot. Yes, we'll replace bo uh, both of these actually with a variable. Um, let me do one. Wait, so bot won't. So it starts at zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. How many did it give me? Went up to Sally at shelter. Went up to here. It actually, so it did give me five. But it starts at zero. So if I want to do the next one, I think I have to start at five. What are you? Did that grab the right ones? Yes. So that started at, did I do this right? Limit five, yeah. So it starts at, I don't know, it just does the next five. Um, so what I can do in, in this situation is basically I need to have down here, after the do while loop, I need to say previous five, say it again. Uh, the number of the record. Uh huh. And the second one is. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, I, I believe it's called offset and display. It's where do you want to start in the record set and where do you want to stop, or and how many do you want to go for? All right. So down here at the bottom, I'm just going to create little span tags to hold this. Not body. Span. Spick and span. There we go. So these are, I'm going to turn these into links. Now these links will link back to this exact same page, but I need to tell them a a href equals index.php. That's this exact same page. And now I need to tell it that I want it to go minus 5 in the record set or plus 5 in the record set. 
So uh, I'm just going to do my offset equals minus 5. And in the next, just copy this. Let's say next. It's not negative 5, it's positive 5. So that means when this, when I hit one of those links, this page is simply going to reload. I'm going to have have to create a variable here called dollar $O for offset. You can come up with a full variable if you want, but I like simple ones like this. Um, if dollar underscore get O That's all right. So is numeric? Is number? I had the wrong. Is underscore numeric? Sometimes I hate PHP. And I think that's get zero. Let's do get O. There we go. Um. Then dollar O equals this guy. Ah. So now I can start to use this plus or minus five around the um, the page or in my SQL. So instead of five down here, I can say sort of limit zero. Well, this is kind of working, um, or limit O. So this is, you can see that this is probably not going to work properly. I'm going to be getting into situations where if I start off, I could actually hit previous and suddenly try and go into the negative five, literally right into negative five. So what I actually want to do is the first time you come to the page, I want to start it at zero. I want the whole thing to start at zero, and then I want to move up and down based on that. That's actually going to be a lot more um, secure. Oh, so it sort of wraps in on it, over on itself. When you get to the end, it also it then includes the beginning. Oh, uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, that requires some AJAX. Um, that was a little bit more complicated than what I can show you in this class. Um, yeah, there's some cheated way around that, or ways around that, where you actually just SQL the entire database and only show it 10 or 20 at a time. And when they scroll to the bottom, you have a jQuery that just loads another div with another set of 20. But mostly that's done, it, it's the same limit thing, and it just keeps polling the database only as it needs it. As one of the benefits of this particular technique is you're not the way Dreamweaver does it, it, SQ, it queries the entire database and then shows you 10 of them. This one, I want to query five of them and then show you five of them. It's going to be a lot less processor intensive. Um, so, So what I actually want to do is, um, I want my, the first time through, if there's no get, if, the, if that arrow has not been defined in the, um, in the URL, I simply want it to be equal to zero. So this is a good way to start with that. Well, if it's equal to zero, then what I can do is I can take O down here, and instead of being equal to five or minus five, I can create an, an, uh, a little PHP command. PHP doo -doo -doo. Um, echo dollar o minus five. Or o plus five. So the first time through, it's equal to zero. And here it's going to come through, and O is going to be, it's still going to be set to negative 5 and 5. 
but I can write another if statement that prevents them from going below a certain threshold or above a certain threshold. So for example, maybe I should make this a little bit more um, cons actually, why don't I just do this as variables up here? I'll just do this dollar previous is going to equal to something and dollar next is going to equal to something. So previous should be O minus 5 and next should be O plus 5. Now this one should only work if we're going to be stay in the positive range. If O is 5 or greater. Um, so I'm going to need a little if statement. If dollar O O is greater than or equal to 5. Then previous is equal to that else previ previous we're just going to set it equal to 0. I'm sorry, actual zero. There we go. I think that works. There. Um, okay, so that works. So if somebody types in negative uh, fifty-three, you could actually just do that in the URL. Well, that's not that's not going to work. This this will that'll error out. This should take care of most of those. Um, if they type in ABC or something like that, it should still default over to Previous equals zero. Yeah. Um, where? Down here at the bottom? Or? Yes, right there. Uh, if right before, in the quotation system, it makes the box. Yeah, we echo. So what's going on? A, href equals, here's the double quote, and here's the ending double quote. It's going to take you to index.php. Yeah. Question mark means um, variables are coming up. The first one is called O, and it is set equal to whatever this spits out. That it does not. No. Um, in fact, it's sent primarily, it's pretty much sent as a string, but PHP is an untyped language, and as soon as right up here where it starts to, where it receives the get, it listens for it and tries to throw it into a variable. As soon as it sees that it's actually a number, it turns it into a number. So $O is numeric. Right, but I see that. Well, get is a variable, so it has a variable, so variable. Yes. But how do you pass the PHP tag into variable? Oh, I'm not. Oh, no, no, that's, that's not what's actually happening here. This is not going to, it's not going to be this in the URL. It'll be this, but the computer is going to see in the H in this PHP file, it's going to say, oh, this is PHP command. I need to run this now. So I'm going to echo, echo out 0 plus 5. All of this will become the number 5 in the HTML. Okay. Um, this might work. Oh, no, not yet. Because I'm still printing out the wrong thing. Now that I've made, excuse me, made those variables up here, previous and next, I need to spit them out down here. And I think this will work. So previous five and next five is going to be, can you see that down the, in the lower left? So if I click next five, oh, it's not quite working. It should, no, that's correct. Because the limit currently is basically at five. So the next one would be 10, the previous one would be 0. And I just don't have enough examples to keep going. Now, what about the top end here? Shouldn't it, it shouldn't be allowed to keep going. For example, I could sit here and keep doing this, and it's going to count forever. But that's not good. Come back, come back, come back, come back. There we go. So we can go beyond the range with the, the current setup. We need to know what the Mac, we can do almost identical to this one with the, with the next, as long as it's less than or equal to the, whatever the maximum is. We need to figure out what the maximum is. And in order to do that, we need to run another query, because right now this query, the one that actually displays information, only shows five. And we can't tell it to go grab the full query 
and just display the five. That's really inefficient. But what I can do is another quick little query here. This is in the wrong place. But what I want to do is just grab one column out of the database, preferably the one that has the least amount of information, so user level. I'm going to do select user underscore level. I'm going to call this query 2. I'll just put a 2 in front of everything so it's a little easier. Uh, from users, I'm not going to limit it. I want to know how all of them are, or where all of them are. And I'm going to do dollar row underscore RS query to total. It's equal to a command I have suddenly forgotten. I have to look at one of the examples. Sorry, I just forgot about this. Well, the ceiling, is that it? MySQL num rows, that's the command I was looking for. I want to just make this simple. Total. I'm going to find out how many rows there are in this out of the entire database. Because I didn't use asterisk, I'm only counting up what's in one column of the database, which is information that has to be there. Um, but I think there might even be more efficient ways to do this with SQL. Just tell it to count. Um, in fact, why don't I look that up? Because that might make it even easier and faster to, to run. SQL count. This is a, um, we'll create a calculated column. Yeah, we can do that. We don't even need this anymore. Select count user level. Wait. That might not be right. Let me go back to the way it was for just a second. I know I can make this one work. Um, I do have one problem here, though. I've made my query after this, so I can't, I can't have my code down here affect the stuff up here. So I'm going to have to take my, I'm going to take this one and pull it down here. So my next is if uh, if dollar o that's what I want to do. If it's greater than five, okay. If it's less than or equal to total. Then I want next to be equal to 0 plus 5. And I'm not sure if I need, hold on. Why doesn't it like that? I'm not sure if that's actually wrong or not. Let's find out. Doesn't like this. MySQL num rows expect parameter one to be resource array given. Okay, so let's Uh, let me see if this is a real problem. 
Okay, that one's not real, but it, it's not getting down to here. My skill num rows doesn't appear to be working properly. MySQLI. I use MySQLI for everything. Query. Oh, MySQLI num rows. Let's do that. New. No, doesn't like it. Grab the wrong one. Oh, I think I did grab the wrong thing. It's supposed to be that. That's what it was. Okay, so now it won't go past zero. And when it goes to five... Uh-oh. Got something going on. So... Undefined variable next in line 47. It's down here, right? Offset. So what happens when it gets to the end? What is happening? Come on. Okay, when it's... When it's here, next O is equal to 5, so it's offsetting by 5. When it gets to this page, it doesn't know how many to, uh, it's offsetting by 10. Oh, yeah, yes, and it should be. But when it gets to 10, oh no, I can't, I don't want it to go past that. Well, let's say there are seven in the database. So basically, oh, I think I'm doing this wrong. It's the if the offset is greater than or equal to the total, as long as it's less than or equal to total, go to this. No. What I would rather do is hide next and previous when they get to their respective limits. That's what I want to have happen. If dollar O is greater than Zero. Let's see if I, I, I I'm going on autopilot. I'm not exactly sure that this is what we need. What this should do is once we get back to the beginning, it's going to hide it. What I want now is since it can't go any further, I want next to disappear. If And where'd he go? Where's the stupid PHP? Go block. There we go. Why don't you give me a cookie? Okay. If dollar O Is within five of total? No. Make that dollar O is greater than if it's greater than zero, display the previous. If it's less than total, I'm not sure if I'm doing this quite right. I think that's still not perfect.
it's still letting me go beyond the limit. But I, after that, I can't go any further. So I think what I have to do is if it's beyond total minus 5, it might be minus 4. Really not like that? But that's fine. I'm allowed to do that. Oh, I don't need a semicolon there. That's what I needed. So if I go into my database and I add a whole bunch more of these so I can actually have a middle page, let me insert a few more uh, stuff, stuff.com, stuff, stuff. Six, blah, 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 I don't care. Um, here's you, Karen. You look so thrilled to be here. Close enough. Uh, the password's now one, two, three, four, five, six. And that puts me up to nine. I need just to cut and do this one more time. So just uh, junk, 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 and I think I got this previous five. When I'm at the beginning, don't show previous anymore. I'm not going to worry about the coding for it. Just don't show it if you're at the beginning. Next, previous and next seem to work. If I go to the next one, I'm at the end. It will not let me keep going beyond the next. That's pagination. The only other thing that you might want to do is have it in between here. Display the total number. Um, so in this one, I can echo... See five to five. Um, this doesn't really tell you where you are in the in the mix. Um, um, Dreamweaver's pagination does the, the next step, which is you're looking at records five to ten, five to nine of eleven. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that, but I can at least tell you how many there are total. Um, the last thing I want to do to this is make it so that excuse me, so that the table is sortable. So that we can view it by the order of, because right now it's just the order in the database. Right now it's, uh, there is no ASC or DESC on it. Um, or there's no order by at all on this. So we're going to add another variable in here. Um, uh, come back. Not that. I'm going to make each one of these a link back to the to itself. Index, first name, or last name. I think this would, this would look a lot prettier in a table if these were the columns across the top, but I didn't build it that way from the beginning, so I'm just going to um, keep it really simple for right now. But what I can do is uh, I can give each of these a separate variable that will or will not create an order by clause that gets shunted into the SQL statement. So they all need to be the same thing. I'm I'm going to go ahead and call it order. I think that's that'll be fine. And each one could be email first and last. This won't do anything just yet, but you can see that those come through. Now the problem will be is if I'm at the end and I click email, it's going to go right back to the to the front. What's going on? Oh, 
let me do this one will help it and what's the exists one is set doesn't like that It's set is correct, isn't it? We've done that one a couple times, right? I thought so. It's not blue like the rest of them. It should be. Let me see if that screwed it up. Did something to it. Uh, what's going on? Oh, I guess I have to do this one first. There we go. Now, if it doesn't exist, it's fine. Um, if you want to be able to keep this going the way it is, we can do and o o equals. And from here, I can actually tell it to just echo dollar o because we've We've created that up there, but now I'm basically sending two variables through the URL. What this means is that I can go to the next page, and when I click on to resort these, which doesn't quite work yet, the O is still being sent. And so that part of the, the commands are still being taken over. If I go to the next one, first, last, O still equals 10. I don't think I've done that with you guys too much, where there's multiple variables coming through the get. You're allowed to do that. If you look at Amazon, click on any link in Amazon, you'll see 10 or 15 ands in there with all the different product numbers and descriptions and serials and stuff. Okay, so right now I can get it to do this. I can get it to send email first and last. I need to come up here and create a nice little switch case to get all of these, and I always have to look up switch case because I can never remember how they work. Um, switch. Leave that there for now. Um, if it's not get o, it's what do they call it? Sort order. If order's been set, then order equals get order. I can do that all in one line. So now I've got it and I can say else dollar order equals zero just to set it to some default value and I don't really care about it. So in the switch case I'm asking I'm gonna ask what what's the value of order and the cases that it could be are it's a colon isn't it? I think this is right. Uh, email first or last and these are supposed to be colons because switch cases are weird in the case that it's an email I'm going to create a new order underscore SQL statement and it's simply going to be space order by user underscore email with a semicolon. Right. 
break. Oh, I need an equal sign. And so what we'll do down here when it actually goes and grabs this and does the limit, we can get it to concatenate. Uh, that's You'll see that's actually why I put a space right here in front of it. There it is. There's my period order SQL. So basically what I should do is if my default on this should be order equals nothing because if, if we come to the page for the first time there's not going to be an order in the get in the get so if it's going to concatenate something to the SQL statement it should just be nothing otherwise it's gonna <laughs> otherwise it would have ordered it would limited by zero and then 50 if I had it concatenated to zero okay but you probably see the pattern here now is I'm just going to do this for each of these user email. Oh, these should be ASC ascending. Yeah, ASC, ASC, and I guess these should be first and user last. Is that the actual columns I have in the database? That would be good to know. user underscore email first and last. Okay, I did match those up properly. Uh, let's see if I broke it. You, you. Nope. I did break it. Woohoo! Doesn't like it here. What doesn't it like? Zero given in 32. Is this wrong? Does... Oh, I think I know what it is. There. The order by has to come before limit. That's what was um, messing it up. But if I do the previous five undefined variable, blah, order SQL. Uh, what's the, uh, I need to, so I think what was going on right here is because I don't have one up here, when it goes through the switch cases, it, it doesn't meet any of these criteria. So order SQL is never created. What I have to do is I need a default. If none of those work, then order SQL just equals nothing. Oh, I was trying to do this on this variable. That, that didn't work out properly. This one can be anything. Um, I think this will work. There we go. And if I do email, I can do it by first name. So A, B, B, E, J, that's in the right order. I can do it by first name, by last name. And the only other problem now is that if I go by last name and I go to my next five, it loses the order by. That. Remember how I added in in these in the order by I added the O to it? I just basically need to add order to the bottom ones. So all I need down here is going to be um, 
I mean an and symbol. Order equals same for you. Order equals and an ampersand. And right in here, I'm going to put a little PHP. That is not echo previous. It's going to be echo order. I think that'll work. Again, I need to check this. Order equals nothing. If I'm in email, order equals email. I can go in the previous. I can, yeah. I can switch this to first. Uh-oh. Nope, nothing came through. And O equals last. I, hit, I did something wrong in here. I did. Uh, I'm starting to see too much, too many things. Well, next, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, because totals in the middle. Sorry. I was I didn't do this. I instead changed the O to order. Oops. Start over. Start at the very beginning. Okay. And let me turn off where it prints out the stupid query. I'll leave it just in case I need to turn it back on. So I can go through the next. Order is nothing in this. And that's okay. It can. It's allowed to be up there and, and not have anything. We can put an if statement that says if it's not equal to anything, then don't display it. But it doesn't matter. If I go back to the beginning, I can sort by last name. So Karen comes up first. And if I go my next, it is going through. It's still alphabetized by last name. I can at any time switch over to first, and I'm at the end of the first name list. I can be at the end. I can go to the next five. I can be at the end of the email list. So there you go. I will put this code up. <laughs> this is a much, much easier example than what the book has. They're going to um, check and double check everything. Um, but this is a very basic way to do exactly what you're going to be doing for Chapter 10. What questions you guys got? Yeah. Yes. So you know what it's doing. This is almost identical to what Dreamweaver does. This is slightly, this is slightly less complicated. Um, but when it doesn't work, or when you want to add it yourself, I want you to understand this. Um, yeah, a lot of this chapter is a lot of the same stuff that Dreamweaver can do in a few clicks. But now you understand what's going on under the hood, and the chapter is going to have you write out a lot of code that's it's different than Dreamweavers, but yeah. Okay.